everybody. Today I am in centralish Arizona around the Tucson area. And if you are interested in the geology of regions in Arizona, such as around Tucson or centralish Arizona, or you want to go rock hounding in this area, it's really helpful if you have a general idea at least of the types of rocks and the rock units uh, that you'll be walking over, crossing, running into. There's a lot of elevation in these areas. There's, there's mountains all the way down to the valleys that you can find yourself in. And as you move around, you will find yourself crossing rock units that range. Well, it includes all the different types of rocks that you can possibly think of, all three main rocks. And you will also be crossing a really wide range of ages. So. If you're out there looking for anything in particular, or if you just want to orient yourself, today I'm going to take you on a quick tour of Central Arizona's typical geology. This will be a general overview. We won't go too crazy into each one. I'll save that for another day. Now, the first thing you want to think about are, again, when you're looking at mountains around you, what are those mountains made of? Well, the typical mountain that you find or hill uh, can it, will exist of older rock units. So if we look at the ones that are behind me here today, if we go up there, we can find some of the oldest stuff. So the Proterozoic granites, usually, granites like Oracle granite and the Ruin granite have these really large crystals, large feldspar crystals, and they're really old. We're talking like around 1.5 billion years old. So let's actually go up into those mountains and take a closer look of some of these Proterozoic granites. Okay, perfect. So this is a typical outcrop of something like the Oracle granite, some of the oldest granites that you'll find in these areas. Here's one of those feldspar crystals that I just broke out of the granite. Check it out. Look how big that is. That mineral consistency gives it kind of a mottled, pinkish, grayish look with those specks of darker minerals contained. All right, so those granites are pretty cool. Now, oftentimes you will come across granites or volcanic bodies of, of rock that have actually intruded the existing rock. Now, in that case, that intrusion is younger than the material it intrudes. Now the stuff we just looked at was actually older or pre-existing as opposed to the stuff that we're going to talk about now, which are the Paleozoic sedimentary rocks. And actually, we're going to go back up into those mountains where there are some great outcrops of those Paleozoic units. So let's take a look. One of the oldest sedimentary units you'll find in the region is that of the Abrigo Formation, dominated by mudstones or shales in the lower portion, but also containing interbedded carbonates and quartzites throughout. A characteristic of the Abrigo is this middle limestone member that contains a gray limestone interspersed with these grayish or tannish silty clay-rich globs along the bedding planes, which gives it a distinct mottled look. In certain regions, you'll also find just below the Abrigo an older middle Cambrian bolster a quartzite. Now aside from the shales and some interspersed sandstones, most of what you encounter in these Paleozoic units are thick beds of limestones and some dolomitic limestones. Formations like the Martin limestone that contain layers of Devonian aged tan to gray dolostones and also a unit where there's kind of this pinkish to lavender dolomitic marble. Formations such as the Escabrosa limestone that contain these huge and beautiful crinoid fragments. It also contains a karst zone responsible for the formation of caves such as the famous Karshner caverns. And formations like the Horquilla limestone that contain porcelainous light green gray material with nodules that are quite large and marled beds and even a limestone breccia. All of these units are within the range of 300 to 400 million years old or Devonian and Carboniferous. Younger still we find units that are Permian aged and continue to be dominated by limestones. 
The ERP formation represents the contact between the marine and terrestrial environments, and so it contains a mix of limestones, dolostones, sandstones, and shales. It even contains a portion that has a bunch of red chert pebbles, and hence it's called the jelly bean conglomerate, and it's from a braided stream system. The Kalina limestone is a gray limestone. The Shura formation contains a red soil unit or red sandstone unit and some quartzites. The Concha limestone also has a chert rich zone and contains crinoid fossils and horn corals as well as bryozoans. And the Rainy Valley formation is characterized by tan to light gray dolostones and is also rich in fossils. And some rocks in the unit give off a light petroleum like aroma. These hundreds of millions of year old rocks have since been exposed to a lot of folding and faulting. These faults are often associated with the movement and location of water and mineral rich fluids. So it's not surprising to find these very tilted beds associated with lead, copper, and zinc deposits in southern Arizona. Folding, faulting, and weathering creates voids that are conducive to crystal formation, such as these large dog tooth spar calcite crystals. Calcite is one of the most common minerals you'll find in these limestone units. Pure calcite is calcium carbonate, and it makes up the main mineral constituent of limestones. The mineral calcite actually comes in a wide variety of colors and crystal forms. I talk all about calcite in my minerals playlist, so if you're curious to learn about specific minerals, check that out. Another beautiful form of calcite in these units is just the classic rhombohedron crystal shape, of which some, like a piece of glass or ice, can be close to or completely see-through. Aside from crystals like these, the Paleozoic limestones across Arizona are full of marine associated fossils like corals and crinoids, bryozoans, bivalves, and brachiopods. Many of the units produce caves and ledges, which are important for certain animal populations like mountain lions and bighorn sheep. There's one, two, three, four. Uh, in total, I've probably seen about seven sheep, and some, there's some babies up there. Voids also provide important habitats for snakes, lizards, tortoises, birds, and other small mammals like pack rats. The soil is impacted by the local rocks and their limey character. It's common to find white encrusted layers called caliche, a calcium carbonate rich cement that commonly forms in limestone rich and arid regions. All right, so these islands of Paleozoic sedimentary rocks are pretty common for the regions around South and South Central Arizona. And in those you'll typically find the limestones and dolomites that represent those ancient marine environments, as well as quartzites and some shales interspersed in sometimes thousands of feet thick of these Paleozoic rocks. These can range from the Ediacaran forward all the way until we get to the Mesozoic. And we're talking hundreds of millions of years ago that this stuff spans that does take us forward into the Mesozoic. Let's spin around here and look at the view. Now the Mesozoic rocks that we find in this region are the ones that we primarily find our copper mining districts in. And these are a lot of Jurassic and Cretaceous aged rocks. And you can actually see a copper mine behind me today, that lighter colored sediment. Actually, let's take a closer look at these Mesozoic units now. The Mesozoic rocks in these regions are dominated by volcanics, which includes rhyolites, volcanic breaches, and even rubbly mud flows like what you see here. Mineralization associated with these units has produced abundant silver, lead, zinc, and copper, as well as molybdenum, and an interesting array of associated minerals. These include the deep blues of azurite, the green splays of malachite, which are both copper ores, bright reds and oranges of vanadinite and wolfenite associated with lead, brassy cubes of pyrite, and silvery metallics like hematite and molybdenite. I'm going to go over all of these minerals in more detail here, so check out the minerals playlist and look for a future video on rock hounding ideas around Arizona. Many large copper mines found in central and south Arizona are responsible for most of the U.S. copper production, mostly porphyry copper. Porphyry are larger grains in a finer background, and this all formed from metal rich saline fluids expelled from those intrusive magmas around 70 million years ago. The Mesozoic ago. ends with continued volcanic deposits and so as we move into the late Cretaceous we're still finding ourselves in volcanics such as the Williamson Canyon volcanic unit and this is characterized by a lot of rocks like rhyolite, some other volcanics that you can find and again associated 
with those copper mining districts. We move into the Cenozoic, we continue to find more volcanic units as well as some sedimentary rocks. Research has suggested that during the late Cretaceous to early Paleogene, around 80 to 50 million years ago, the region may have had elevations exceeding 10,000 feet and looked something like the Tibetan Plateau. Between 20 and 40 million years ago, southern Arizona contained numerous volcanic vents, cones, and calderas. This volcanic activity in the Cenozoic left behind volcanic flows, tufts, and even basalt. Many of these volcanics contain voids which can be lined with beautiful clear quartz crystals as well as a milky white bubbly silica known as chalcedony and the green mineral olivine or perdot. In southeast Arizona are dozens of isolated mountain ranges, some of which can tower to very high elevations compared to the valleys below, hence their nickname the Sky Islands. These include the Santa Catalinas, the Rincon, the Tucson and the Tortolitas, the Pinaleños, the Santa Ritas and Chiricahuas, the Huachucas and Whetstones, and many more into Mexico. Many of these are known for their wide range in elevations and resulting habitats and biodiversity, as well as fascinating geology and mineral riches. The tall mountains and valleys below together make up what's known as the Basin and Range of Arizona. The northwest trending basins and ranges actually make up a larger geologic province that stretches all the way from Oregon to Mexico. The extensional force which resulted in the lifting and dropping of blocks of rock resulted in this topography sometime around 15 to 5 million years ago and have since been deeply eroded and cut by the many streams of the region. And then the youngest of material in the Cenozoic to today will basically be a lot of that eroded alluvium that collects in flat areas or basins or on alluvial fans and that's where you can just find some rocks that are floating at the surface. This is often where you might go to look for things like um, agates that have eroded on the surface or jasper and sometimes these can be rough to smooth off rocks dep depending on where you're looking but that will be your youngest material. Okay so there you have it a quick overview of the rock sequences that you will encounter if you're rock hounding or exploring the geology in south central Arizona around Tucson. I will be talking about all of these rocks and taking you on more detailed adventures in each of them and more detailed adventures into these mountains. So if you're curious about the geology in this area or the geology all over North America. I'll be traveling around and taking you on geology field trips. So join me on the next adventure here at Let's Go Geo. See you guys there.